I started by working on the top section. I figured this was going to be the most challenging piece and once this was made, everything else would just fall into place. I'm using a 20 gauge sheet steel that we have bent into 8 inch by 8 inch by 8 inch channel. Right now, I'm cutting the middle section out of a 5 foot section of this channel. The overall dimensions of the specific water feature are 5 foot by 5 foot wide by 10 feet tall. My first thought when I drew this is that it's going to be a very weird looking water feature, but often clients are restricted by the area in which the water feature is going to be placed. So outside of my first reaction, when you see this in its location, you'll understand why it has to be so tall. Now here I have to be very careful because once that side piece is cut out, it's going to get very flimsy. So I'm going to have to be very careful not to bend this piece of channel. Now I'm going to make two of these one and a half foot pieces. These will be the side legs for the top of the X. I'm cutting and bending half inch tabs on each side of the short piece. That will allow me to basically hook it into the longer five foot section and weld it. Right now I'm scoring the metal and not cutting all the way through so that when I bend it, it will actually bend much easier and along the line. It would be a little tricky to put this into a finger break to bend this half inch tab, which is why I'm doing it this way. Now, I have another video that shows how to bend steel without a break, and I'll leave that link up here in the description. Now, I'm going to use these flathead vice grips to make those bends, and as you can see, it's very simple now that I've scored the steel. The tabs will be inside the main top piece that I cut earlier. Now, I'm setting two short sections into the larger section, and I'll get everything clamped, so that it all sits exactly where I want it before I weld it. I always love taking on new projects because I enjoy challenging myself. This was definitely a nice challenge. And much to my surprise, this was going together much easier than I expected. Of course, I had to add a little persuasion with the hammer every now and again. Now, I'm doing the exact same thing to the water basin that I did with the top. A typical basin is 2 feet wide by 12 feet deep, and in this case would be 5 feet long. Here, I'm going to take a foot and a half section of water basin, and I'm going to be welding that to the 5 foot section of water basin. Now, my first thought was to actually cut out a 2 foot by 1 foot opening in the water basin, but then I decided against it because it would really compromise some of the integrity of the main structure. So I left the five foot water basin intact, put tabs on the foot and a half section like I did with the top, clamped it all in place, and then I could start to TIG weld. Once the two side pieces are welded onto the main section, I can get in there and actually punch holes in the sides of the five foot section, which will allow the water to transfer between the small sections and the main basin. Now I don't know if you weld stainless much, but what I've noticed is there can be some warpage issues if you weld too hot too long in one space. So tack welding to hold everything in place and then rotate your weld patterns so that you don't stay in one area for too long. This way you reduce any type of warpage. Now this is where I'm going to start the process of punching holes. Now I need to drill some holes into the five foot section water basin to create pilot holes in order to get a punch in there to create the larger holes. Now, I don't know if you've tried to drill through stainless, but you're going to go through a lot of bits. This is why we've started punching stainless, but we do still have to drill a pilot hole. The punch I use is very cool. I'll leave a link to another video up here that shows you how this works. But basically, drill a pilot hole, use a small die that creates about a one inch opening, then you can move to the larger holes. On this particular water feature, I'm going to be punching two inch holes. Once you get yourself set up to punch, you start to pump the handle. Now here you can actually see the die pull through the stainless as it creates a perfect hole. This will allow the water to transfer between the main basin and the two side pieces I welded on. 
Now, the side columns were made the exact same way we do most of our side columns on our rain curtain water features. We have a one inch framework inside the eight inch by eight inch channel, and we weld the channel to the framework. In the base, we have inch and a half angle that we punch holes in so we can actually attach the upright columns to the stainless basin. Now, this is kind of what we're doing right now. We're positioning the columns on top of the X basin where they need to be. Our next challenge will be taking the X top and placing that section up on top of the 10 foot columns. This is where it gets tricky and it really helps to have someone you know you can trust. Robin and I have worked together for over 30 years. We started out in the circus back in the late 80s. We have climbed more ladders, walked more I-beams than I can remember, and we've created more projects than I can count. We actually put a huge ESPN t-shirt on the Statue of Liberty in Las Vegas in front of the New York, New York. And we used to test all of the stunt gear at the MGM theme park, back when they had one, before the stunt men and women would actually use it. We were the pre-stunt men behind the scenes. It's always nice to work with somebody that you know you can trust and that you know how they go about problem solving. And yes, I know before you start to comment, we know that we're standing too high on these ladders. I'm not saying that it's right, but considering some of the heights that he and I have worked at and some of the positions that we have gotten ourselves into, oftentimes over 100 feet up in the air, these little seven foot ladders don't feel like much to us. That's not giving anybody else permission to do it. I'm just saying, be careful and we'll do the same. Now we're getting the columns lined up with the X section and we're gonna get those clamped so that they're in place before we start bolting together. All right, I'm gonna fast forward here. Now obviously you can see this has gone to the powder coater and it has returned. We've installed the plumbing. Now this water feature also has LED lights and as you can see, we simply just overlap the LEDs. And in the column, this is where we also put our plumbing. And as you go down this PVC pipe, you're gonna see that we actually put in a ball valve. This allows you to regulate the flow of water. This is also where we put our electric lines for our LEDs, and now you can see our pump and the autofill valve. This actually worked very well. This is our test, and we're quite happy with the way it turned out. Now, let's take a look at what it looks like installed and at the client's house. I wanna take a moment right now to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. It is greatly appreciated. And if you have not subscribed, please do so now. It helps the channel. And if you'd like to leave a comment below, please do that as well. And I'll see you in the next video.